Welcome back, everybody. Let's do a more difficult problem. We're going to find uh, with tangent planes using parametric or parameterizing a surface. So here we're looking at a sphere. A sphere is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals rho squared. That's right. The equation for a sphere. We're going to parameterize any point on that sphere as the vector. Uh, we're doing the spherical coordinate. So x equals rho sine phi cosine theta, y equals rho sine phi sine theta, and z equals rho cosine phi. Uh, recall when spherical coordinates, that was zero to pi for phi and zero to two pi for theta. And we're going to prove that the radial vector is normal to the sphere at all points. I mean, we can kind of picture that. And uh, we got something like that. We got our x, y, z. And any point from the origin to the surface, wherever it intersects that surface, should make a right angle, be uh, orthogonal to it. So it makes sense in, in our head. Uh, let's just prove it. So we've got our function of r right there. We're going to do dr d phi cross dr d theta. So pause the video if you'd like. Make sure you get these derivatives like I did. Then we do the cross product. So our x component is rho squared sine phi squared and cosine theta. The y component is rho squared sine phi squared sine theta. And then we've got rho squared sine phi cosine phi times cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, which is obviously one. <clears throat> so if I take the norm of that, I, the derivative or the square root of the squares, sum of the squares. So I squared each one of these terms and added it up. We do a little bit of factoring to reduce where we can, pulling the row to the fourth sine phi to the fourth out of both of these leaves us cosine squared plus sine squared. Uh, which we can send to one. So then we're left with rho to the fourth sine to the fourth of phi plus rho to the fourth sine squared phi cosine squared phi. We're going to split this sine square, sine to the fourth up into sine squared times sine squared. And we're going to convert one of those sine squareds to one minus cosine squared phi. The row to the fourth, I can factor out of both, take the square root, it's rho squared. I don't need an absolute value because uh, rho squared is already always gonna be positive. <coughs> You'll see when you clean this up, we've got a sine squared phi, cosine squared phi that is negative, cancels out this one. So we're just left with uh, the square root of sine squared phi. So this part right here and that cancels that and we're just left with this one. Square root of sine squared phi, we've got rho squared sine phi. So if we normalize it, because that was the norm, rho squared sine phi, we normalize n, we had our n up here, we're gonna divide that by rho squared sine phi. We get sine phi, cosine theta, sine phi, sine theta, and cosine phi. And if you compare that to R, sine phi, cosine theta, sine phi, sine theta, cosine phi, the only thing that's missing is a rho. This is one over rho times R. So the normal vector is a scalar multiple of the radial vector. Uh, the radial vector, it's pointing from the origin outward towards the surface, that's the radial vector. So <coughs> R is a scalar multiple of N or vice versa. Uh, so we proved that the radial vector is normal everywhere. That's it for that video. Peace.